Wow. It's already been over a year since the first MOSFET board was released. Now here's the second one. This is the MOSFET board 2. It shares many similarities between the first one, including uh, easy and accessible motor drive capability, which means that you can drive almost any uh, pair of flywheel motors within our community. It uses a MOSFET so it can handle high current and being switched by low current so you can use thin gauge wiring to control the MOSFET. It was modular, so you, there were XT60 connectors that you can just connect to really anything in the blaster. And it's small, and also Arduino compatible. And it has all the protection circuitry you'll need to protect your MOSFET from almost any failure mode. But now, this guy has all of that, but in a smaller package and for cheaper. Let's see how easy it is to install and get up and running a flywheel cage. This guy is just uh, 3S Krakens on an OFP42 with uh, Morpheus and some Bulldogs. Just like the other one, simply put in the XC60 to the motor. I like to use the Kelly motor cages or the motor boards uh, since they're so much easier to install. Here's the uh, LiPo, just the regular 3S. Here's the, uh, the master switch. And here's a recycled uh, rev switch that you can use. Let's turn this guy on. And look how easy that was. Just like the first one. Let's do like a side-by-side -side comparison so we can really see what changed. First of all, look how small this guy is. This guy is barely bigger than an XC60 connector. That's good since the PCB itself actually has uh, more resistance compared to the wiring. So when you want to handle high currents, you generally want your PCB to be as small as possible. I've also designed this PCB so the entire PCB is used as a heatsink. So if the MOSFET gets too hot, of course, the PCB itself will help dissipate and absorb that heat. And here's the other one. As you can see, it's a lot bigger. Now I found this one really, really awkward to place in a strife, so I've decided to go make the push to do smaller and smaller uh, builds. This guy also uses the same connectors, so they have the XC60s, and you also have the JST XHs down here. If you've ordered one of these previously, you can simply reuse those connectors right into the MOSFET board 2s and it will work perfectly. Now let's see some of the differences. As you can notice, besides its size and cost, it has these, these little headers up here. And now these guys are actually really useful. Although this original MOSFET board was uh, Arduino compatible, this guy makes it way easier to do that. Here's an Arduino Uno. And I'll show you how easy it is to get it set up running with a MOSFET board. Let's connect up the flywheel cage. Let's get the LiPo in. And we're not going to need these guys. Let's just add a few connections here. I'll need like three wires. Where do I plug them in at? Well, the new MOSFET board comes in many different variations. You can pick and place which connectors you want where. So you want these kind of connectors, you can specify that on the shop. You want maybe right angled connectors, specify in the shop. And you want these header pins right here. You can do that as well. The previous version of the MOSFET also used these little jumper caps here to, to bypass the master switch. I found it to be kind of tricky to get these guys in and sit, seat properly and also take them out. So if you plan to use these jumper caps, you can just uh, order the board with these headers and just snap them right on. There are also more options for XC60s, so these wires. You can have them without the wires, you can have them with the wires, and you can have them with the wires included and soldered on. This, these just give you a lot more customizability in what you want. And because I've uh, programmed the entire website myself, I have full control over how it works. So these options are really, really interactive and I would recommend you go check them out. Let's take one of these guys. These are just your regular headers and they can go right into the breadboard. You can also get them in a right angled variant or a JST XH variant. So this guy has three pins. These two are basically the same, just that this guy has three pins and this guy has two pins. So you'll need to connect course the flywheel cage 
the lipo and something like three wires so you here's one of them here's another one and here's the last one and there you go that's that's it Look how easy that was. Now, if you want something like uh, PWM, that's gonna be a bit more tricky, but still really simple. You need like one line of code and something like four, three or four extra wires and of course the potentiometer itself. As I'm moving more and more into this sort of Arduino stuff, uh, of course I'll have tutorials covering all that. So this would be like for select fire, which will be coming soon. Uh, solenoid control via Arduino, which will of course be coming soon and more. That's about it for the Arduino. You can also do the same with any model of the Arduino. And you can also use a Raspberry Pi. So the MOSFET itself is compatible with 3.3 volts and 5 volts, which provides a lot of uh, customizability in what kind of microcontroller you want to use. In addition to Arduino support, this guy also has solenoid support, which is getting pretty big in the community. Plug in a solenoid. Plug in your switch plug in your master switch or bypass it. Let's leave it off and we can see the master switch in action. There we go, nothing's there. But when we turn on the master switch, we get the, we get the solenoid. Look how easy that was, just like a flywheel cage. Now I've been architecting this sort of MOSFET system for the past few months. And in addition to these headers providing Arduino, another microcontroller and microprocessor support. There are also some uh, boards I have work in progress. So this would be stuff like a PWM board where you want PWM in your blaster to simply tack on a new board that snaps right onto these headers and boom, you've got PWM. That one's gonna be for a solenoid control. So you get select fire solenoid. So you can switch between full auto and uh, single shot. And then of course, uh, that same board can be used for uh, PWM in your flywheel cage, your flywheel motors. So that way you can get variable speed. And there's also more stuff with Arduino coming soon and uh, motor braking. So stay tuned. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to check out my links down below. That includes a new Facebook page and Instagram page that I've recently made, as well as links to all, buy all this stuff and the uh, paper I wrote on how uh, MOSFETs work. Of course, there's going to be a ton more tutorials and content coming soon. This includes more boards and stuff that I have that I've been working on for the past few months and tutorials too. Thanks for watching.